I remember one moment, Josh, there was, uh, you know, we were down to no money. I didn't know how we were going to make it. And a potential uh, private equity company, a potential investor had gotten hold of our product. And they're really well known and they've turned a ton of small companies in pre-revenue into big businesses we all shop for in grocery stores and big box retailers. And I was so excited. I thought, oh my gosh, if they invest in us, then A, we're not going to go bankrupt. And B, what if they use their leverage to like, you know, get us into all these stores that keep telling me no. And I was so excited. And we went through meeting after meeting after meeting. And we started the diligence phase where we brought on lawyers. It was a whole thing. We got to the final meeting and my husband and I flew up for this meeting and presented the whole future product pipeline. And at the very end of the meeting, the head, the team was awesome. I knew they were like really for me. And then the head guy uh, says, you know, congratulations. He was standing about three feet from me by the way. And he says, congratulations. You should be so proud. Um, this is a really great product. You should be really proud of it. Uh, but it's going to be a no. We're going to pass on investing in it cosmetics. And at this point, I got in so many no's. And I said to him, like, okay, can you tell me why? Because feedback is usually a gift. And he just got really quiet. And, uh, and then he says to me, do you want me to be really honest with you? And I was like, yes, please. And then he paused for the longest time. And I remember the moment his mouth started moving and he says to me, I just don't think women will buy makeup from someone who looks like you with your body and your weight. And when he said those words, um, I actually never felt any anger toward him, but it was like a lifetime of body doubt and self doubt, like flood in my body. So I felt like I was staring my own fear, like straight in the eye. But when he said those words, I'll never forget this. I got this feeling like deep down in, in my stomach. Like I can feel it like it was yesterday that, that said that, that literally said he's wrong, like he's wrong. And I didn't know how to prove it, but I got that feeling, that knowing, um, which is when I pray, that is how I hear God, <laughs> that still small voice. And when he said those words, I just don't think women will buy makeup from someone who looks like you with your body and your weight. And I got that feeling that, that the city's wrong. When I look back at that moment, what I know happened is that he gave me a no, but God gave me a knowing. And I believe every one of us, I believe our, our intuition stronger than anyone else's advice. I believe so much of our life will come down to which one we listen to the no or the knowing. And so many of our most painful rejections can come from other people like this one did, but most of our most painful rejections can come from ourselves and the things we're telling ourselves and being able to tune into what is the truth and what isn't and how are we going to define or redefine rejection. And so in that moment when he, and, and by the way, every one of us deals with rejection in different ways every single day. And when he said those words to me, I just remember making the decision. And by the way, I went out in my car and I cried, uh, <laughs> but I made the decision. Rejection is God's protection. And I don't know how it's God's protection right now, but I'm going to believe it. And that was one of my favorite go-to definitions. And then six years later, I hadn't heard from him in six years. Six years later, the day that L'Oreal acquired our company, um, they're a public company. And so I learned the night before they were going to disclose the purchase price. And so it was everywhere. Um, the homepage of the Wall Street Journal, it was everywhere that L'Oreal paid $1.2 billion cash and made me the first woman to hold a CEO title of a brand in their hundred year history. It was everywhere. And it was the first time I heard from him in six years. And he said, uh, congratulations on the L'Oreal deal. I was wrong. And I don't know, Josh, if you ever saw that movie, Pretty Woman, <laughs> like where yeah, she where Julia ago, goes in the yeah. store, they won't help her. And then she like goes in a couple of days later. So what I wanted to say to him was big mistake. Huge, huge. Uh, but I didn't. I kept it classy. Um, but here's what I knew is that had he believed in me at the time, I was so desperate. I would have given him the majority of the company for probably nothing. I didn't know how we were going to stay alive because he didn't believe in me when we sold the L'Oreal. We were still the largest shareholders. And I was like, rejection is God's protection. And so it's one definition, but I just want to encourage everyone at home to write out new definitions of rejection that you know and you know to be true, that you're going to replace that old thought every time it comes up so that you build resiliency. You don't let rejection 
or failure take root and make you even for a second think you are rejected or you're a failure. Uh, and you just start building that resiliency.